Boys and girls, welcome to another edition of MR2 Spider for Dummies. This means you. Just kidding. In this edition, we have a cute little MR2 Spider that we are prepping for a 2ZZ swap. The first step, of course, is to wash and wax the car. And while the wax is curing, I am go going to list in detail every single item that we have put together in preparation for this swap. This episode is going to be split into three parts. Part one is what you need for the engine. Part two is what we need for the engine harness and computer. Part three is parts you need for the transmission if you are swapping the transmission at the same time as the engine. Let's start with the engine. The number one item that's needed for the engine is the engine mount adapter. This attaches to the 2ZZ's engine mount bracket and it allows it to bolt on to the insulator that sits on the fender of the MR2 Spider. Number two is the oil dipstick tube. Normally in the, a front wheel drive 2ZZ the dipstick tube would be coming out right here and it would be inaccessible in the Spider. So uh, I've purchased this uh, custom dipstick tube from NWR. It bolts on right here and right here and another mounting point down at the bottom. Um, or you can modify your 1ZZ's uh, dipstick tube to fit. Number three, uh, the heater core block off. This uh, blocks off this uh, nipple that would go to the heater core in the 2ZZ but it is not needed in the MR2 Spider. A very important vacuum plug. The 2ZZ has a vacuum nipple that may be situated right here behind the throttle body or on some models it is situated right on the plenum. Uh, this must be blocked with a rubber cap most 2ZZ engines will come with a power steering pump mounted in this location or they may have nothing at all if the power steering has been removed. So you must take the spacer, the mounting bolt and the power steering delete pulley uh, from your Spider 1ZZ and put them on your 2ZZ. To run your engine you need an air intake and a mass airflow sensor. You can reuse the mass airflow sensor uh, from your current car. This uh, custom cold air intake is an eBay item. Um, I purchased it on eBay for about $45 and it works just great. Another absolutely essential item is the header. For my car I have a custom header that goes above the cross member. Um, in most situations, you can purchase a swap header that fits onto the head and uh, uh, connects to the stock uh, mid-pipe or downpipe. The 2ZZ has a different flange, a different flange than the 1ZZ, and the 1ZZ flange will not fit on a 2ZZ. Next, the fuel rail you reuse the fuel rail from your 1ZZ. There's no need to even disconnect it from the fuel line. However, if you need to do so, we have another video that shows you what tool you can use to disconnect this uh, quick connect fuel line from the fuel rail. Okay, and uh, when you remove your 1ZZ engine, all you do is you uh, pull the fuel rail with the injectors, pull it right off. Okay, and then you can remove the engine leaving the fuel rail connected in the car. These are the two EVAP solenoids that you need if you want a uh, functioning EVAP system. This one in the stock spider is mounted on the airbox and its role is to take uh, clean air from the intake and send it into the uh, uh, carbon canister. 
This one is mounted on the intake tube and its role is to open and suck fuel fumes out of the carbon canister and route them into the intake where they can go into the cylinders and be combusted. So when you do your 2ZZ swap you must find a place to um, mount these EVAP solenoids and connect them correctly. Let's cover the transmission. First, the mounting brackets for the transmission. These are unique to the Spider. This mounting bracket is for the top of the transmission. This mounting bracket is for the rear. On the firewall side, there is one more mounting bracket. And this one has an attachment point for the uh, um, slave cylinder line. This hose attaches to the hard line that goes underneath the car. The three mounting brackets for the transmission must be attached onto the new transmission so it can be fitted onto the transmission mounts. Next we have the linkages. This is the side to side linkage and this is the back and forth linkage also known as the bell crank and this is the uh, counterweight lever and these are all specific to the spider and they must come out of your current car and they must be installed onto the new transmission. This side to side linkage for the uh, shifter is mounted with two bolts that go into the transmission case. Now when you get your six speed transmission from a front wheel drive it will not have these two holes. This will be just blank. So you have to measure, position, um, then drill and uh, tap these holes for the M10 by 1.25 thread. We have the cable mounting brackets. These are for mounting the transmission cables and these Brackets are also specific to the spider and you must move them from your current transmission and onto the new transmission. On top of the transmission right here is the reverse light sensor with this connector wire. And I can't recall if this is specific to the spider or not. You may have to swap it out of your current transmission. Now I'm going to show you the features of the gear selection shaft which is a, a special item that is unique to the six-speed transmission when it's installed in the spider. So to show you this, to remove the gear selection shaft assembly, first I remove the bell crank, which is just mounted with two bolts right here. Then I remove the four bolts that attach the reverse block out to the body of the transmission to the case. Then I remove the spring detent. Okay, that's on top of the transmission. You need a 24 millimeter socket for this. Uh, the other bolts on here are all uh, M10, so they have a 14 millimeter socket. And then with this in neutral, it comes right out. And I'm going to set it aside so we can look at it more closely. Okay, so this shaft that goes all the way through has to be purchased from Monkey Wrench Racing and is different from the original shaft that goes in the six speed in the front wheel drive. It is a, a unique shaft for the six speed in the rear wheel drive application. Okay, so on this shaft, we've taken every single element of the assembly from, our, from the six speed transmission and we've moved them from the front wheel drive shaft to this new shaft. Now, this is the reverse blockout. Okay, this is the reverse blockout assembly. Um, it also has to be purchased. And uh, the function of this reverse blockout is it ta it creates resistance. So uh, you do not accidentally shift into reverse gear while you're driving. Okay, and uh, these outside elements, the counterweight is from 
your MR2 Spider and it is removed from the MR2 Spider gear selection shaft and placed onto this new shaft. Installation of the gear selector shaft. You make sure that these gates which uh, are connected to the shift forks are all lined up. You can use a screwdriver. If they're not lined up, you can reach in with a screwdriver and line them up. You can move them easily back and forth. And then the tip of the gear selector shaft has to go right into that bushing in the rear and it will slide right in. Let's quickly look at the shift pattern for this transmission. This is what you must have if you want it to operate correctly. Pulling all the way back. This is reverse. This is first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth, sixth. This is the clutch and flywheel. The clutch is mounted onto the flywheel with, uh, let's see how many is it, is it eight bolts, is it six bolts? We remove the clutch place. Underneath is the clutch disc. This is a six buck ceramic disc. And this is the flywheel. The flywheel is mounted onto the block. For mounting the flywheel, by the way, this is a Fidanza flywheel, lightweight aluminum flywheel with a steel friction plate. Steel friction plate is screwed in. Um, and uh, the flywheel is mounted into the block by these bolts. These are ARP bolts. They are reusable bolts. I suggest that if you are going to replace your flywheel that you purchase these ARP bolts. Now we talk about the harness, the engine harness in the computer. This is the engine harness from a 1ZZ. We removed it from the 1ZZ and we're going to put it on the 2ZZ that we're going to swap into the car. The important thing you have to do is you have to locate this three pin connector this is your three pin connector for your throttle position sensor. Okay, and it comes off the branch of the harness that has the mass airflow connector on it. Okay, so, and it's also just near the uh, power terminal for the battery. Okay, so you find this, and what you must do is on this. Uh, we've already done it. You need to swap two of the wires that go into this connector. This means that you ex they change places. All right. It's very important that you do that if you want your car to run right. And there are separate videos that show you how to do this. This is the computer that you will use to run your 2ZZ GE engine in your Spider. This computer comes out of a Toyota Celica manual transmission and the model's years are 0000 to 02. The serial numbers or part numbers on these computers that you can use are 89666 and then you have 20080 or 81 or 82 or 83. These can all be used for your 2ZZ swap. One more very important piece is the two pigtails for lift. There is a pigtail for the lift oil control valve or OCV and there is a pigtail for the oil pressure sensor for lift. Here you see 
where these pigtails plug in on the engine. This black pigtail goes on the oil control valve for lift. This white pigtail goes on the oil pressure sensor for lift. And then, if you follow the line, it has to go in to the connectors that go through the firewall and plug into the ECU. And in a separate uh, video, we'll show you how these are integrated to the ECU's connectors. Along with the harness, we need a primary O2 sensor. This O2 sensor is the one that the ECU uses to measure the uh, effectiveness of its fuel mix. The 2ZZ engine uses only one primary O2 sensor, unlike the 1ZZ, which uses two primary O2 sensors for two banks, bank 1 and bank 2. The 2ZZ has only one bank. Okay, so this must be fitted after the collector of the header. And uh, if you take the uh, same part number as your downstream O2 sensor, which is after the catalytic converter, this same O2 sensor will be the right fit as primary for your 2ZZ swap. Okay, so now the little spider has been buffed and polished and it is sparkling clean. You've seen every single component that we need to swap the 2ZZ engine into this car. I've lost count, but we've covered almost 30 different things that you need to do for your 2ZZ swap. And in future episodes, we'll go through a step-by-step -step of the swap. Please uh, put your comments or questions below, and uh, thanks for watching.